Hey guys, welcome to another Friday video. This is a retro build Appendium 3 running at 1000 megahertz. We will talk about all the parts, but also talk about the software side of things from the BIOS settings to installing Windows, the chipset drivers, the software, everything will be covered in this video. And to help you guys out, if you're building a similar Appendium 3 slot one machine, I will put resources down in the description where you can download, for example, the chipset drivers, the video drivers and other resources. And here we have the Intel Pentium 3 1000 is for the slot one system. So you need a slot one mainboard. There are a couple of options, but mainboards with the Intel 440BX chipset are the way to go. The processor does generate a fair amount of heat. The uh, cooler on this is actually a little bit on the noisy side, but I didn't have any compatibility issues. And here we can see the specifications running at 1000 megahertz with 256 kilobytes of cache and a front side bus of 100 megahertz with a CPU voltage of 1.7 volts and made in the Philippines. And here we have the motherboard that we're going to use today. This one is from AOPEN, the AX6BC. Here goes the processor, the slot 1 CPU. There is usually a mounting frame here, which is perfectly fine if you're installing this inside a case. But I work with open test benches, and when I swap CPUs on a regular base, this uh, mounting system here can be a bit of a pain in the neck, so I remove it. Here's the chipset, the famous Intel 440BX. It's a very yeah famous chipset. It's been used in a lot of emulators and also uh, virtual machines. We have three SD RAM slots. The front side bus on this main board is 100 megahertz, so the RAM will run at 100 megahertz, uh, but usually you just buy PC 133. HEP goes here. We have a total of five PCI slots and also two ISA slots. There are two ID controllers here, and unfortunately the floppy controller is in an inconvenient location, but we won't be using a floppy drive today. And here we have the ports at the back, two PS2 for keyboard and mouse, two USB. These are USB 1, so they are actually quite slow, but they can be used in Windows 98 for easy data exchange with a USB thumb drive. Two serial ports and also a parallel port. We're using 256 megabytes of memory. This one is rated at 133 megahertz with CL2, so that means you can go into the BIOS and dial in the fastest memory timings. And this is the video card we're using today. ATI Radeon is getting some love today. This is a interesting video card. I've done a, actually a full video on these types of video cards. This is a Radeon 9250 and I call this video card uh, a cockroach video card because if you collect parts, uh, such a video card will find you sooner or later. It's not very powerful but it actually works really well in Windows 98. The drivers are fantastic. You get all the options for anti-aliasing and isotropic filtering and also with the uh, vSync controls. It also has DVI output and unlike NVIDIA, the DVI output it generates is very sharp. So I'm um, talking about the DOS screen, BIOS screen and so on. They are outputted at 1280 by 1024. So for those who are doing some capturing, uh, these Radeon, card, Radeon cards do produce a slightly sharper image. And yeah, we will check out the performance later. Is this a suitable video card for this processor or did I pick something that's not quite fast enough? And this is the sound card we're using. Usually I use a Sound Blaster Live or an Oriel Vortex 2, but it's time to try this one. This is the Turtle Beach Santa Cruz. So before Turtle Beach did gaming headsets and other peripherals, they did sound cards. So this one has the Crystal CS4630 chip. And uh, yeah, I've been using the sound card and I really like it. So it sounds very good and um, to summarize the sound card, I would call it a really good all-rounder. So it does A3D and it does EAX and it does a little bit of DOS. It's got a wavetable header here as well. It's um, not as good as some other sound cards in specific situations. For example, EAX, a creative card, does better. A3D, the Vortex 2, does better. And DOS, you're better off with an ISA sound card. But this card does all, all of them fairly well. 
and it uses the uh, Sensor 3D technology for 3D audio and yeah, pleasantly surprised by the sound. I also like the driver, it's nice and compact, no issues, no blue screens, so yeah, definitely put this card on your shopping list if you're looking at buying some retro parts. A fast Pentium 3 deserves some fast storage for decent smooth loading times. And this is indeed a 2TB SSHD from Seagate. So this is a, basically a mechanical platter hard drive, but it's got 8GB I believe of uh, flash memory to accelerate the loading times. And you might be wondering why Phil are you using a 2TB hard drive? Well. At the back we have a SATA 2 ID adapter, so this is basically an ID hard drive now, configured as a master device. Here goes the Molex power and here the ID interface. And there's some nifty software from Seagate, it's called Ctools, so you can download it from the Seagate website. It's an ISO file, you burn it, it's a bootable disk. And this program lets you set the capacity of this hard drive. Out of the box the BIOS will detect this as a 136GB hard drive. Uh, it can't read the entire capacity and Windows 98 will have issues with a drive that is that large. So you use Ctools, limit the capacity to 32 gigabytes and look at that after a reboot. The hard drive is detected as 33,821 megabytes. Perfect size for Windows 98 and also ran some benchmarks with ATTO disk benchmark and we're getting really nice performance. And we also need a optical drive to install Windows 98 of a bootable media. At the back we've got the usual ports. So here goes the ID interface, Molex power, and then we have analog and digital audio out to connect to your sound card. And here's the jumper. This one is configured to master. You want to use two separate ribbon cables, one for the optical drive connected to the secondary port on the main board and the hard drive also configured to master, uh, also a separate ID cable connected to the primary ID port on the main board. That way if both devices are operating the uh, bandwidth is not shared. They have got full bandwidth on their own ID controllers. Before we install Windows let's configure the BIOS and this is just my method. It's not the ultimate guide, it's just what I've been using for many many years when I install Windows 98. So I go into the BIOS and then I load the turbo defaults. And I've got a list here of all the BIOS settings I uh, carried out. I went into the BIOS and disabled the floppy drive because we're not using one. I set the plug and play operating installed option from no to yes. I also changed the option that the resources are controlled by uh, from manual to auto. I then disabled the onboard floppy controller and I also disabled both serial ports and the parallel port to free up some precious interrupts and resources. And now we have to install Windows 98 SE. If you do not have a copy, you can go to the WinWorld website. They have an ISO to download. I went for the OEM version. That one is bootable, the retail version is not. There's also the product key on the right hand page, so just write that down. Now we are booting off the media and uh, you get a menu and you just choose start Windows 98 setup from CD-ROM. It detects that the hard drive contains a non-MS-DOS partition, so go ahead with the option to remove the files and reconfigure the hard drive. And also select the option to enable large disk support. The machine will reboot, uh, re restart and then format the hard drive after which the installation begins. Fill in the computer name and choose the location and after another reboot you need to accept the license agreement, enter the product key and one more time for another reboot. Now you enter the time date and the time zone. It will then after a while uh, load the plug and play monitor driver and then I do a bit of housekeeping just removing some of the uh, desktop icons and I'm also creating a shortcut for the explorer on the task bar and now we have to load software onto our machine. There are lots of options. You can for example burn yourself uh, a disk and use the optical drive. You can also use USB storage. There's a USB storage driver which you can install. I like to do it differently. Um, because uh, I like things to be fast. I shut my machine down 
and I plug in the hard drive onto a Ugreen hard drive uh, adapter, a USB 3 hard drive adapter, and I just copy the files across that way. So what I'm copying across are drivers. We've got uh, some DOS games, some Windows games, and also some benchmarks. Now we have to install some drivers. First up are the Intel chipset drivers. I'm going with version 6301007. And yeah, that doesn't take too long. And after a reboot, it will install quite a bit of uh, drivers for various components. After the chipset drivers have been installed, you want to go into the device manager and enable the DMA mode for the hard drive. That will give you better performance, less uh, strain for the processor. The video driver is next. You can get the ATR Radeon Catalyst 6.2 from the AMD website. I really like these drivers. They have everything integrated. No need to run cool bits or any other hacks to get vSync controls. And I'm setting the resolution to 1280 by 1024 with 32-bit colors. The sound card drivers are next. We're using the VXD drivers version 4081. And yep. Yeah, they, they install fairly quickly and after a reboot, a couple of tweaks I do recommend. Go into the control panel and there's an option to set the sample rate conversion quality. Change that to best. There's a little slider that you have to move to the right. And next we're gonna tweak the mixer. So I'm basically muting all the audio inputs to have a quiet output. To get DOS sound, you need to go into the control panel. There's a Santa Cruz control panel and run that and there are a couple of options in here and one enables legacy DOS game support uh, and after a reboot we have basic support in uh, for DOS games. The FM quality is not the best but at least it's working so from a DOS prompt let's have a look at playing Doom. <laughs> And lastly, we need DirectX. The video card we're using is DirectX 8.1 compatible, so that's what we're gonna install. Let's run 3D Mark in 99 Max, we're getting 5,797, and in 3D Mark 2000, we're getting 5,558. I also checked out some games. First up, we have Incoming. This game only has uh, support up to 1024 by 768. We're running at 32 uh, bit colors, and we're getting over 100 FPS. Not much difference with the resolution, so this just means that the video card is perfectly fine for this game. And in GLQuake, we can see something different. Here we can see the performance drop off as we crank up the resolution. At 640 by 480, we're getting comfortably over 200 FPS, but once we get to 1600 by 1200, only 54 FPS. So GLQuake is a game uh, on the Radeon uh, 9250 uh, up to 1280 by 1024 is what I would play this game. And I also checked out power consumption. The power meter for the entire system told me it's drawing 62 watts and it really doesn't matter what you do. You can be on the desktop uh, or run a game. It draws 62 watts all the time. So this was before processors had speed step and would throttle down to save energy. They basically run at full speed all the time. But 62 watts is nothing. I'm using a 350 watt Corsair power supply and yeah, that's really all you need. So any half decent ATX power supply uh, is perfectly capable of running such a system. So guys, there you have it. Let's talk about this system. The main weakness is probably the video card, the Radio 9250, a little bit underpowered, especially in GL Quake, we could see that. But if you stick to 1024 by 768, then the performance is definitely nice. The Pentium 3 running at 1000 megahertz definitely is a fast machine for Windows 98. You can go faster, there are Pentium 3s running at up to 1.4 gigahertz with the Tualatin core and more cache. But um, a mainboard for such a machine and the CPU, they can start to cost a little bit more. Having said that, the Pentium 3 1000 is also not a cheap CPU, so just keep that in mind. You can, however, get a slot 1 adapter with a socket 370 CPU for a better price. And the slot 1 machine is something I would recommend for 
a beginner to the retro scene. So if you're thinking about going back in time and building a retro gaming PC and you want to try Windows 98 and some MS-DOS, the slot one machine is so easy to use. Uh, the, there's a reason why this chipset is being used in with emulators and virtual machines. It is that good. It is very reliable, very uh, sturdy. Uh, you shouldn't get any crashes and other issues as long as you pick your components wisely. So with a sound card, go with uh, Sound Blaster Live or Oral Vortex 2 or with this one, the Turtle Beach Santa Cruz, which positively surprised me. I still have to play with it a little bit more, especially with headphones and in 3D games, but so far I really like it and it's flying a little bit under the radar. The uh, retro scene is yeah, definitely picking up live cards and especially the Oriel Vortex 2 cards, but not many people talk about the uh, Turtle Beach Santa Cruz, so you should be able to find these for a good price. I shall have a look on eBay and AliExpress if I find any links for some of these parts, I will put them down below in the video description. Also, thank you for to WinWorld for um, letting us download Windows 98. I call these, this kind of software, I don't care where. Um, technically, uh, it is still piracy and the licenses are still in place, but uh, Microsoft, I think, I think they just don't care if you do something with DOS and Windows 98. If you muck around with Windows XP, I think uh, Microsoft does care, so I've got to be a little bit careful. But with Windows 98 and Windows 2000, I don't care where. Uh, don't run around, you know, uh, boasting that you've got a free operating system. But uh, for us people in the retro scene, it's really nice that Microsoft kind of turns, turns a blind eye and lets us just enjoy our old computers. And yeah, also the storage, very interesting. Seagate, and I believe Seagate bought a few other hard drive manufacturers like Samsung, so the C-Tools software should work for other hard drives. On this machine, I booted C-Tools directly off this with the uh, SATA 2 ID adapter, very nifty, turning it into a very fast mechanical 32 gigabyte hard drive with perfect compatibility, uh, compatibility with the BIOS and with Windows 98, and the hard drive performance was excellent. So snappy loading times, and that's what you want in combination with a fast Pentium 3. You don't want to use like an old 10 gigabyte mechanical hard drive. The access speeds are very slow. They make a lot of noise as well, and they might only rotate at uh, 5,400 RPM and are therefore quite slow. So all in all, pretty pleased with the outcome of this build. Um, it's been a smooth ride, and the performance was terrific. Uh, didn't have enough time to try out some more games, but it will handle uh, a lot of games very well. And you have a, a lot of range with the video card. It doesn't have to be a Radeon. You can use a, a GeForce, Matrox, uh, NVIDIA, uh, sorry, uh, 3DFX Voodoo card. So lots of options to choose from. And yeah, so that's the end of the video. Do let me know what you think. So that was a, a blast of the past. It was long overdue to do a proper retro video. It's been a while. Um, I do get a few comments every now and then why I don't do more retro videos. And um, partly it is because I've already done so many retro videos. I covered a lot of stuff already. So um, that's one aspect. But also I listen to your feedback and I just get a lot more comments and requests for the more modern stuff. Maybe it's to do with uh, people into retro computers a little bit older and not into social media like Facebook and commenting on YouTube But that really tells me what you guys are after so if you don't comment and if you don't let me know what you want What, what you want to see? Um, it's very hard for me to uh, Know what you guys want to see so uh, basically I do videos that you people request and that you people watch But every now and then I also do a video that's passionate to me um, despite not many people probably end up watching it like this one, but hopefully you find it interesting enough. So yeah, all I can say is keep those suggestions coming. Uh, coming. I will put resources down below in the video description. The slot one platform is really uh, friendly for beginners to the retro scene. So if you uh, wanna have a go, that's a sort of a system that I would recommend. And yeah. That's it. Thank you for watching. Give it a like, share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I shall see you soon with another one.